Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Tuesday, October the 15th, 2024. And welcome back with another update here on Invest 94L, as this still poses a threat for tropical development potential over the southwestern Atlantic over the next seven days. So to start off this video, here's a look at the latest GOES-16 satellite imagery over the entire Atlantic Basin, including the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico for the 15th here of October. And what we're tracking right now on the imagery is Invest 94L, which is moving generally westward at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So anyone living on some of these islands still needs to be monitoring the progress of this system as there could be some inclement weather expected here. But the good news in today's update is that this is not likely to develop significantly into our next tropical storm or hurricane as what some of the models still indicate here. And I'll show you some proof on that in just a little bit. But right now, anyone living in the southwestern Atlantic in this area that I've circled in still needs to be watching this system pretty closely just in case if we get any surprises out of it. Now, when we take a look at the seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, for Tuesday afternoon and evening here, you can see there is a 30 to 50% chance of tropical development with this disturbance over the next two to five and seven days. All right, so I wanna make it clear in this video that we are not going to be seeing a powerful hurricane here like what some of our models were showing yesterday, but we could still see a tropical depression out of this disturbance as this moves generally westward and then gains latitude a little bit and heads off to the west northwest but right now the good news in this video is we are seeing those chances decrease a little bit we're not seeing a 60 percent chance in seven days but instead we're down to now 50 percent chance but don't let that fool you as these chances could change pretty dramatically without warning all right, now all of you are probably wondering, will this develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm over the next seven days? Well, let's walk through all of the global computer models to share with you all what might end up happening, and I'll give you all my own thoughts in this video. So we're gonna first look at the GFS model, which is the American model. Then we're gonna look at the European model, the Canadian model, and last but not least, our German model, which is the ICON model. So that way I'm very thorough, I'm detailed in this video. That way we don't fear monger you all or scare you all that, oh, there's gonna be a big hurricane coming. No, that's not what I'm trying to say here. So we're gonna walk through this pretty thoroughly and look at the spaghetti plot too towards the end of this video. So looking at the GFS model here, this is a look at the rainfall forecast, the simulated radar reflectivity forecast, and we can see there is our disturbance that I've circled in black. So you can see there's a little bit of moisture with that, some heavier rain cores within that moisture pocket. So looks like areas down here to the south will likely not see anything significant with this. So good news there, but again, still watch the system like we need to until we're very much certain that it's not going to impact the central windward islands. Like um, if you're in, say, um, if you're in Guadeloupe and some of the islands to the south, like uh, St. Lucia. Going forward in the next 90 hours, this would be for um, Friday night into Saturday early morning on October the 18th and the 19th. And you can see it's just a little bit of a moisture pocket that's going to be moving over your region. So over the Dominican Republic, uh, just north and maybe over, say, Puerto Rico, maybe some showers and thunderstorms over the northern windward islands like the uh, northern Lesser Antilles and the Greater Antilles gonna get most of the impacts with anything here from maybe a tropical depression, maybe a storm or two. But again, we're uh, we're gonna have to uh, really watch this though because models have downtrended a little bit with this because there's just so much drier air. And then you can see it really doesn't do much over the next six to seven days. So thumbs up, seven up that the GFS model has downtrended on this which is good, but man, yesterday we were thinking that, oh, this might actually develop. It has that potential, and now it's been taken off of our model. And looking at the 
18Z run that is now currently rendering. We won't be able to show you that in this video, but probably not going to show anything too significantly at the moment. Now, looking at the European model, um, you can see um, the question is at this point, where is it? And I'll tell you where it's at. It's actually right here. So very broad, not no longer a closed surface slow at this point in time in 60 hours. So this looks to open up into an open wave trough. So it loses organization and it still continues to be open as it moves across the southwestern Atlantic and impacts, say, the Dominican Republic. The biggest threat here would be enhanced trade wind showers, some thunderstorms, and maybe a breeze or two out there with maybe winds between 15 to maybe 25 miles an hour. But again, nothing too substantial at the very moment. That's what models have shown today. Even the euro has downtrended on this, as well as even the Canadian model not showing much in the way of development here. In fact, the Canadian is still probably the most aggressive out of this system. If you look at our precipitation forecast, you can see there's that little pocket of moisture right in here where we have the more enhancement of showers and thunderstorms where the air is converging at the surface where you get um, these um, intense um, hot towers that develop. But look at, looks like most of this will move to the north of the Windward Islands as well as, say, Puerto Rico. So if you're doing anything uh, on Friday or Saturday, for right now, my own opinion on this is do it. Go out and have some fun with your family, have a barbecue if you need to for right now. But again, keep an eye on the system at the same time, right? It doesn't look as significant as what we thought yesterday and what we thought in the video before that. Which, by the way, some of you are saying that I was a little aggressive in yesterday's video. I will speak uh, upon myself. I will own up to it. I was a little aggressive yesterday, and I'm being honest about that. And that's because of our recent model trends leading up to that day yesterday. You have to always assume that, oh, because we have this trend going on what if it did continue and ever since the 18z gfs model run yesterday things have trended weaker so now in this video we're going to play it more safe than to go over the top right because now we're looking at yesterday's model trends into today and right now they have all downtrended However, there is one model out there, and a lot of you are probably making fun of the Icon German model. This is the 18Z run showing a potential tropical storm, if not even a hurricane. Yes, I don't know why the Icon is really glued to this scenario, but it's been showing that. In fact, the 18Z run is also downtrending a little bit more, but still wants a 988 millibar system just to the north of the Dominican Republic on Sunday. Now, if we look at our 12Z run, it was a little faster and more to the northwest of there, but showing us also a hurricane at the same time. So, uh, again, we'll see if is the icon onto something. Probably not, given the majority of our models right now are showing not much development out there in the Atlantic for the time being. Well, we have an area to watch, but right now the background state just not there just yet. Now to add more credibility to this forecast is that the fact is we don't see tropical development out here this time of the year because uh, the Cape Verde season shuts down or the Cabo Verde season, I should say, uh, typically shuts down because climatology speaking, it doesn't favor this area in the main development region and usually peaks in late August into middle of September. Instead, we start looking for tropical development usually in the northwestern Caribbean near Florida, like what we had with Helene and Milton, great examples of that more typical development. But while Milton kind of outsmarted everybody with its intensity, we also have development out here still near Bermuda during this time of the year. And even so, this is even slowly beginning to shut down as we go throughout October. To add more credibility to this is the number of hurricanes. So that was a look at tropical storms per 100 years. And you can see green areas, 30 to 49 named storms per 100 years. So that's basically every other October we usually 
get a name storm in this general area. Now, the number of hurricanes per 100 years averages between about 20 to 34. Now, there's a little bit of a speckle here out in the middle of the Atlantic where it gets about 35 to 49 name storms. But even over here is usually a shut down show just because of climatology. So that's a look at the climatology in a standpoint for October as far as the deep tropics go. From our spaghetti plot, let's see if this even updated. And it did. Okay, we just got a new update on our intensity forecast. So a huge update just came in on Q. So forward the video if you haven't already to this point. And you can see right here, the models have even downtrend even more, which means I have continued to do that. And now I do not predict that this will become a, actually, I still predict it's going to be about a 40 mile an hour tropical storm based on this. But this is probably a little on the higher end side. And the ensemble forecast from the GEFS has even trended down. Look at some of the tracks barely reach the islands because it thinks it's going to disintegrate. Now, as far as 94L goes, um, as far as our hurricane track guidance, again, same thing like we had a little further to the south with the guidance here showing the HMNI model goes directly west straight into the northern windward islands within the next three to four days. But after that, it looks like it's going to disintegrate. Well, anyways, if you found this video very detailed, helpful, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel hit the like button, and share this video with your family and friends on social media. I will be honest, I did go a little over the top in yesterday's video, and I do apologize by that, but again, yesterday was a different day in the modeling business. Today, it seems like all of the models, based on what I can see, have downtrended on this, but don't be surprised if this perks up again on model updates tomorrow or days ahead, because this is trying to get its act together, but it's struggling to do so. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more in the tropics tomorrow.